Hi everyone, this is a Friday Reads. Welcome. I did not keep my goal of doing one every Friday in February, but I just, I'm trying to do them when I have time. I have time this week, so I'm going to call that a win. I don't have that much to share in terms of what I've recently read, but I do have a small book haul for you, so hopefully that makes up for it. I have been reading, but I have DNF'd some stuff, which I talk about on my Patreon. Um, I'll be doing a February DNF's at the end of this month if you want to see me talk about books I did not like and did not finish. I've also been reading things for other projects, like, like my shelf actualization project. The book that I was reading was like 420 something pages, so it took a little while to get through. Um, and I've been reading some poetry, which I'm also going to talk about on Patreon, just because I don't know what I'm talking about and don't want to embarrass myself on the whole internet. So let's instead talk about what I am currently reading. I am currently in the middle of, I guess, about a third of the way through The Adventures of Almina al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty is now her pen name that she's going by. She is the same author who wrote the Devabod series, which started with City of Brass, which I really enjoyed in 2020. Being able to plow through that entire series in the summer of 2020 was just perfect. It was a rough time for the world. It was a rough time for me mentally, emotionally, and just being able to fall into this fantasy world was such a comfort. And I really loved the way that she particularly like set her scenes and, and wrote descriptions of place. It really helped me feel outside of the house that I was inside of for seven months, basically straight. Looking back on 2020, is such a wild time, but that is a comfort for sure that I look back fondly on. So this is the beginning of what I think is going to be a new series. At this point, I can't tell exactly what the series is going to be about, um, but I can assume it's adventures of this pirate crew. We are following Amina al Sarafi, who is a retired pirate captain. She has gone into kind of hiding because something bad went down with her crew uh, probably about 10 years ago or so. And so she's been living in hiding, but because they are in hiding, they don't have very much money. Their house is run down. They struggle to find enough to eat. So one day the mother of a former crewmate offers her a huge sum of money to help locate her missing granddaughter and Amina cannot say no. So the first part of this book has been kind of setting the scene, you know, tempting her with this adventure that she, she can't say no to, not only because of the money, but also because it's one last, one last um, opportunity as a, an older woman to go on an adventure because she's probably in her forties or fifties now. Um, and it's also in a historical setting. And you know, also women aren't typically pirate captains. So she's got that to stand up against not only her gender, but now her age as well and her experience. Um, so it's been her getting her old crew back together for this adventure. And I anticipate that at the end, she will not go back to her reclusive ways and will keep the crew together and they will go on subsequent adventures is my assumption. Um, at a, currently at about a third of the way through I'm enjoying it so far. I think it's really fun. It's pretty much what I wanted. I tried reading some other stuff that just wasn't clicking for me in the same way. Things that were like really dark and heavy and I just wanted something fun. It's been a rough 2023 so far. Things are, are looking up. Um, you know, my birthday was last week. I'm now 30. Like I had a great birthday in Manhattan and, and I've applied for a new job, which is exciting. Like, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but that's a thing. Um, so anyway, things are looking up and, and I've read some stuff that was fun and definitely kind of got me out of a funk. And I feel like now that I'm kind of turned a corner, I'll be better prepared to read things that are a little bit on the heavier side, which is like most of what I want to read for the rest of February. I have really grand plans for how much I will be able to actually finish in February. Like it's not realistic, but I didn't read as much this month as I would have liked um, or finish enough, that, finish as many things as I would have liked. So I'm reading that, it's fun. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really glad that I got an advanced copy. I would like to do a review, but we'll see if I if I do that. And then I'm also reading Milk Blood Heat, which is a short story collection. It's really small. The short the stories are about 20 pages each, and I'm really enjoying this so far. So it covers a wide swath of different themes. Um, they're very relationship focused. Some of them are coming of age focused, but we're covering a lot of different kinds of relationships and it's all realist short fiction. I believe they take place in Florida, although personally for me, I'm not feeling Florida like hop off the page. Um, but I think that that is the setting. But like the first story was very much about like two girls just like right on the edge of puberty and going through like teen angst and, and it kind of going to an extreme. The second story was about a woman who had had a miscarriage and was grieving that loss and um, her husband just not 
understanding why she took it so hard. And that was very emotionally heavy and impactful. There was a story in here about a girl who is struggling with her faith and potentially like challenging and losing her faith or like putting her faith in something else. There was a story in here about a man whose wife is dying of cancer and it's uh, cancer that has come back and she has decided that she does not want to undergo treatment again and him kind of failing to accept that and and his personal grief with that and then the story that i just read last night was focusing on a relationship between a mother and a daughter when the mother has had sort of an emotional affair like she hasn't had a physical affair but she confessed that she she'd had this opportunity to cheat and um you know, maybe like there was some physicality, but they hadn't had sex. And so and there definitely was like an emotional component there. And so her husband has left and her relationship to her daughter is rough. But she also finds out that her daughter maybe is having an inappropriate relationship with a teacher. Uh, so that I thought was very interesting. And the mother loved food and cooking. And so that plays a fun role in the story. So those are the stories that I've read so far. I'm really enjoying them while I'm reading them. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult for me to remember them after I've read them because I don't think that the writing is necessarily like anything that's really wowing me or, or blowing me over. I think it's more just, I like how contained these stories are. They feel complete. The characters feel realized and are they're doing what they need to do to tell a good story, but they don't linger beyond that. I haven't found myself thinking about these too much after I finished them, but I'm really enjoying them in the moment. Now let's do a little book haul. I would have bought more books on my birthday because we went to a lot of bookstores, but the weather in, in Manhattan was terrible on the 16th and 17th. It was like humid and warm, but like not warm enough that you want to be outside and also like drizzling and spitting. So it was wet, <laughs> humid, kind of warm and uncomfortable. So like all of the, the, places inside very clearly had their heat on so it was really hot inside and but it wasn't pleasant to be outside just it was it was not great because we we spent the night in Manhattan so we had you know bags of clothes and toiletries and stuff that we had to carry around with us the next day before we you know did things like we went to a vegan restaurant for dinner that was very good we saw Hades Town in the front row which was amazing um but you know, we had stuff to kind of lug around with us throughout the day before we got to that point. So I had a bunch of stuff, I was warm, I was uncomfortable. And because it was also wet outside, I didn't really wanna buy a bunch of books and have to carry them and worry about them getting wet. That's all to say I didn't buy as many books as I maybe would have wanted to, was tempted to. I ended up walking away with four books, only one of which I purchased with my own money, the rest were gifts but from my husband, which is very sweet. Yeah, I, I feel like I've been very good with book acquisition so far. Most of the books that I've acquired this year have been library books. And I am keeping track of how much I've been saving from library books, just looking up, you know, their list price and how much I spend, which is nothing. Um, I have acquired like, I think like $800 worth of books this year so far. And I have spent about $17, which is fun. Um, and my TBR shelf is also not growing, which is one of my big goals for this year. I think right now I can safely say it's stable. I don't know if it's getting smaller, but it's not getting larger. Uh, enough rambling. Let's just talk about the books I got. I was feeling very much in a, in a nonfiction mood, except for this top one, which I just showed, so I'll talk about it. Um, it is Out There by Kate Folk. So I've heard a lot of really great things about this short story collection from a lot of people. Most vividly in my mind, I know that Kayla from Books and Lala loved this. Um, I'm always looking for more short stories. And I ended up picking up Milk, Blood, Heat because I was like, I buy so many short stories and don't read them. So I should read a short story collection in exchange for having just purchased one. So I, um, so I started that one. I purchased this one. I decided to read just like the first couple of sentences to get a, a sense of the writing style. Um, and on the very first page, it was my birthday. I had just turned 30 and there's a line here that says I was 30. So I felt like I had to buy this because it was my birthday and I was 30. So there's this. I think these are supposed to be like weird, queer short stories. I don't really know much more than that, but I liked the writing style. And then, yeah, I was feeling nonfiction. So at McNally Jackson, I picked up Death by Landscape by Elvia Wilk, which I know the Sunnies book club read this a few months ago. I know a lot of people really enjoyed this and it's 
fan it describes itself as fan nonfiction, which i think is fascinating and so it's it's sort of like pop culture literary criticism about um apocalypse and dystopia and dystopia and utopia real and imagined self and world and makes connections from a really wide range of authors including karen russell hong kong and octavia butler which i think that sounded really cool it just seemed really interesting i love this cover as well so i'm excited to give this a go and then also at mcnally jackson i picked up peter brooks's seduced by story which i just seen jalen from the bar in the bookcase talk about um and i was really intrigued by this because it's it's diving into the power of story, the power of narrative, and how we can be n manipulated by them, which I think is an interesting thing because that's kind of, I, I say it again and again, but that's sort of the point of reading fiction or reading at all is to be manipulated in one way or the other and to the author's point, to feeling something. Um, and some people often, sometimes people complain about having felt that manipulation. And so it's interesting when the manipulation maybe is invisible, people don't mind it as much, but when it feels more pointed, people do mind. I don't know, it's it's a thing I've, I've waffled on for many years now, particularly after reading like A Little Life, which people straight up said was ma emotional manipulation. And I always thought that that was an interesting critique to have. Um, so I don't know if that's specifically going to, going to address that, but I just, I thought that it was intriguing. Um, it says, discussion that ranges from the girl on the train to legal argument. Um, and just talking about criticism and philosophy, it might go over my head, but I, I just, I, I want to keep learning. I want to keep thinking. I miss engaging with text and, and being more critical of text like I used to in college. Uh, I do that sometimes. Sometimes I do want to just read for fun and turn my brain off, which I've slowly developed the ability to do, but sometimes I do really want to think and consider what I'm consuming in terms of narratives and what they are doing and what they are trying to do and all that stuff. So there's this. And then last, um, I got Men We Reaped by Jasmine Ward because I've wanted to read this for a really long time. I've now read two of Ward's novels. I read Sing Unburied Sing last year, but and I liked it, but didn't love it. And then I also read um, uh, Salvage the Bones probably in 2017 or 2018. And I really, really loved that book. So I've wanted to read more Ward. She has a new book coming out this year. So I figured it's a good time to read some more of her backlist. And I just seen Max from Well Done Books, the Instagram page, um, and old booktube friend of mine. Uh, he posted that he just recently read this and loved it. So it was top of mind. We happened to be in that particular section at Barnes and Noble, um, the big one in Union Square, again, we were mostly really wanted to sit in the cafe, but the cafe was full. So we just sort of wandered around um, looking at books and trying not to buy too many of them. Um, so I got this one from there. That's my, my little haul. Uh, I'm excited to read those hopefully soon. Who knows? I don't really know what I'm going to be reading in March. I have not thought that far ahead yet. And then in terms of things that I'm going to read next, the only thing that I know for certain, other than my other self-actualization book from Lindsay, which I am going to read after I read Mouth to Mouth by Anthony Wilson, which is the book that I selected for my book club on Patreon um, and my book club in real life. I had to cancel my January book club because I had COVID. So I'm really excited to not be sick and and um, devour this in anticipation of the meeting. This is under 200 pages and my husband last night, he is a slower reader than I am and he doesn't read very much and he was able to read 50 pages in one sitting, which is a lot. So um, I have no fear that I'll be able to get through this quickly. It's supposed to be a novel of obsession. So I think it's about a man who saves another man on a beach and then becomes obsessed with him. I don't really want to know much too much more than that because it's supposed to be really twisty. Andrew Sean Greer says it's one of the best books he's read in ages. So that's intriguing. I haven't read anything by him, but you know. Um, and it's also got a blurb from Lauren Groff. So I'm excited to see what this is like. And hopefully it's fun and twisty and kind of messed up and about like manipulation and obsession and, and self. So I'm excited about that. That's what it promises to be. And then my... March pick for my book club in case you're interested and you want to see my discussion that I have with my husband because after book club we kind of like decompress and like synthesize our thoughts and everything by filming a, a discussion between the two of us. It's been really fun to do that. Um, we are reading How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. So if you want to read that with me and be on Patreon, that would be really cool. I'm excited to read that book and see what people think. But yeah, the book club has been really fun. Um, 
it's all the RSVPs are full up. We'll see how many people actually show. But we had a really great discussion about True Biz, which feels like ages ago, but that's the club that we had in December. And it's been really fun and valuable and um, a lot more interest in it than I would have ever expected. And they are cool with me just kind of picking whatever. So I'm kind of doing that going forward, just picking things mostly from my TBR um, that I am interested in reading and think would make for good discussion and have broad ish appeal. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, it's been a rambly Friday Reads. I hope you're doing well. I'm excited to make another video next week uh, talking about what I've been up to reading and hopefully making more videos soon. So let me know your thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned in this video. What you are currently reading, recommendations for me as always are super welcome. Join my Patreon if you want to support me. You can also check out my Pango bookstore. I'm really trying to get rid of those books. They're sitting here in a pile and I would like them to not be in my house anymore. So if you want to buy some books from me, that is also linked below. Um, what else is going on? My husband and I are trying to watch as many of the best picture Oscar noms as we can. We missed some of the ones that were in theaters, so we won't be able to watch them all, unfortunately. And that I think has given us some freedom to to give up on things because we turned off Elvis about 20 minutes in last night. So yeah, just looked at my husband and I was like, I hate this. And he was like, me too. I'm just like, we don't need to sit through another two hours of this. So uh, yeah. <laughs> So far, I'm rooting for Tar. I would love it if Banshees won. I'd also be happy if Everything Everywhere All at Once won. The Fablemans was okay. I think that's all the ones I've seen. And yeah, obviously we turned Elvis off. <laughs> so we'll see what we watch next. We're going to watch All Quiet on the Western Front tomorrow, I think. So yeah, that's really, a okay, that's actually all that's going on with me. Other than that, now I'm obsessed with the game board game Wingspan, but that's a different conversation. So <laughs> if you want to chat with me, Let's do so down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.